For the first time in well over a decade, Grand Lake St. Mary's does not have a toxic algae water quality advisory to start the summer. Spectrum News 1 reporter Tino Bovinzi takes us to West Central Ohio to show us how the largest man-made lake in the state is rebounding and if we should expect it to continue to improve. Here at Grand Lake St. Mary's, the surrounding towns and businesses thrive on the quality of the lake, which is why people are rejoicing to learn it's in the best state it's been in over a decade. At the Boardwalk Grill in Salina, things are looking up. As the staff is getting ready to open, General Manager Bill Edmonds is checking out the patio area that includes a recently purchased tugboat he's turned into a pizzeria, all part of his plan to attract more people to visit Salina. When you see this little bit of Key West, Florida, just come in with a smile and we'll greet your garden right. Edmonds is an optimist, more of a glass three quarters full. So when he learned the quality of the lake is improving, his eyes lit up. I think it's perfect. It's a perfect timing for everything. It's just like the stars have aligned. He's not the only one. At the Greater Grand Lake Visitor Center, you find longtime resident and executive director Donna Gruby, who says the lake showing signs of improvement is more than welcome, especially after all the challenges they have faced. You don't know what you have until it's taken away. She says the first notice of toxic algae came 12 years ago, warning visitors and residents of potential health risks of coming in contact with the water. It was tough in the tourism industry as folks uh, weren't sure how, if they wanted to come to Grand Lake St. Mary's, weren't sure what they could do here, and we had a rough couple of years. Which prompted the creation of the Lake Improvement Association, a group focused on fixing the largest man-made lake in Ohio. Wright State University's Lake Campus Research Team, led by Dr. Stephen Jockerman and his students, helped monitor the lake. He says the lake's improvement this year comes down to one main factor, low rainfall. The Grand Lake St. Mary's is like many um, inland lakes and reservoirs um, here in the Midwestern United States uh, in that it has had a long history of um, nutrient runoff uh, and nutrient pollution. Mercer County is the largest farming county in the state. Over decades, the phosphorus found in fertilizers have run off into the watershed eventually making its way into the lake. These nutrients that have come into the lake um, have fueled over time. They have fueled uh, harmful algal blooms made up of cyanobacteria, and these harmful algal blooms have fouled water quality. So how bad is the problem? In this particular uh, lake, in this particular watershed, we have some of the highest nutrient runoff um, you know, anywhere, and we have some of the most uh, prolific um, unfortunately, uh, algal blooms, both in biomass as well as toxicity um, that you'll find. After millions of dollars in treatments, research and collaboration, the amount of nutrient runoff is being reduced. There has been um, a tremendous array of best management practices implemented um, on the fields in the watershed, as well as all sorts of conservation practices around the watershed. Things like uh, um, reconstructed wetlands um, have had a tremendous uh, impact on bringing down some of the nutrients that come into the lake. Those changes, along with low rainfall totals, are reducing harmful algae, at least for the start of the summer season. But Dr. Jockerman says the improvement may only last for a short time. Um, we do expect there to be um, an uptick in algae as the summer months progress. And again, this is because nutrients can come from a couple of different places, one of which is the very sediment that the lake is on top of. And so we expect that you know, in the coming months to fuel um, a bloom. However, he's hopeful if the region continues to follow this pattern of conscious effort to improve the water quality, more good signs will come and the toxic algae signs can stay down. To see things like we're seeing this spring um, really gives fuel to the idea that you can make a difference and that you can conserve the environment and that you can move the needle in a very positive direction. Which is a welcome sign for residents and businesses, especially coming out of the pandemic. Uh, folks, local folks are very excited. They're very pleased. And again, like you said, there's kind of a pride in our lake. We, we love living here. We love the lake. And now not to have that stigma, have those uh, warning signs up. It's uh, definitely a double blessing this summer. For Spectrum News, I'm Tino Bovins.